this is our testimony. You do wonders in our me. You do wonders, say. You do wonders in our me. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. You do want to say. You do want to say. Go ahead and sing. This is what God is doing in our midst. You do want to You do want to say. One more time. You do want to You do want to say. Faithful God. Do want the same army. You do want the same army. You do want the same army. Faithful God. Faithful God. Ever faithful God. Hallelujah. Ever faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, worship Him. His presence is in this place. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. minutes can we just lift up our voices and say father thank you go ahead and express your thanks and gratitude unto the king say father i give you praise thus far you have been our ebenezer you have been our ebenezer bless his holy name Rateka pari ke tema kaprasia, randa di kaposa prege di belera bosh. Zapari anta proga di belera da da bosi. Reka pari anda baba kapre de ke tiba laba kaya. For your faithfulness, for the miracles, for the signs, the wonders, the transformation. Bigger than Koinonia, bigger than ENI, the King of Kings. Bless His holy name. Say, Lord, I thank you. Unto you that answers prayer, will all flesh come. For ye have come unto Mount Zion, even the mountain of the Lord. Hey, Baba, banana, nama, si, de, 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 raka, paria, da, bala, da, bo.
Thank you for your spirit. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are all that we have. You are the one who reveals the Father. You are the one who reveals the Word. You are the one who causes the Word to come alive in our spirits. You are the conveyor of the presence of God. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, truly, there is liberty. Liberty from ignorance. Liberty from sickness. Liberty from oppression. Makabarata basega de baladabos. Celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, we recognize you. Beautiful one, most precious one, God's gift to mankind. This is Koinonia, the place of intimacy. Open our eyes, O God, that we may see. Open our ears, O Lord, that we may hear. Cause our hearts to understand your ways and your precepts. Emmanuel! Emmanuel! That's our desire. hear from you we want to hear from you we really want to hear from you go ahead and pray and say Lord speak to me tonight let it not be a waste of time this is not about church or religion I'm telling you this is an encounter for as many who are truly interested in the matters of the kingdom hallelujah There are two kinds of people in every congregation. Hallelujah. Number one, those who want to fulfill the law of religion just to come around, sing around, play around. They are the ones the Bible says having a form of godliness.
the Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you, Most High. Sing, Lion and the Lamb. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who comes Blessed is he who comes He comes tonight in the name of our God. In the name of our God. You will be changed tonight. In the name of our God. You will be blessed tonight. In the name of our God. We come tonight. In the name of our God. We teach tonight. In the name of our God. 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 Blessed Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence. As we explore by the Spirit the riches that are wrapped up in your person, we pray that you grant us understanding. Break the bread and cause our eyes to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to just walk up to two or three people. You don't need to smile and make a lot of ceremony around it. Just tell them it's good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to see everyone tonight. All looking glorious. Hallelujah. Now, before we quickly go into the word, I'd like to do something. Um, mommy, today is their um, one year anniversary, and she told me, Can you come, Ma, and all of the family members? We want to pray for them. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Mommy, and all the children and the loved ones. Where are they? You are disowning your mother. Hallelujah. Nankwat, where are you? Oh, they are not around. Inside, outside. If you are outside, please appreciate them as they come. Quickly, quickly, quickly.
Hallelujah. It's exactly one year since um, their daddy went to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, they are used. separate. 
act like a native doctor you can act like satan all kinds of things that's a form the bible says that there are a group of christians that have the skill and the art of acting like they are serious with god acting like they truly believe his word hallelujah acting like they are serious about growing acting like they truly desire more of him acting as though his word is final authority in their life the bible says having a form the bible calls that activity a what a form of godliness so you pray in tongues like the rest pray you seem to have a zeal you say oh god more of you when you see people getting on their knees you you can act it well scripted play the bible calls it a form of godliness it says but denying the power thereof hallelujah so the proof that your godliness is genuine is that there must be power behind it that it must produce some results that can compel men to see that you are not pretending i'm telling you there's nothing that grieves my spirit like seeing many believers acting as though they truly desire god acting as though we truly love him you know, when you raise the song be thou enthroned then everybody just keeps quiet and you just lift up your hands and you are thinking about all manner of things hallelujah the bible calls it a form of godliness you assume you pretend it your room has all of the jesus signs and everything you have all the christian songs on your phone the bible says is the form of godliness but they deny the power something in you tells us that although you are acting in the crowd but there's something that is betraying that form hallelujah that every time you join the crowd to do like they are doing sing all the christian songs something seemed to point out and let us know that no there's, there's there's something not true and there's something not genuine hallelujah and god has a problem with that having a form of godliness where you hear the word of god and you jump and say whoa hallelujah but you are the last to practice that word you truly do not believe it the true proof that you believe a thing is that you put it into practice hallelujah when you hear an information and you put it to work hallelujah it proves that you believe it the bible says having a form of godliness but denying the power of it is a from such turn away that's not even the interesting verse verse 6 for of this sort they who creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away by various laws seven this is the verse read this ever learning ever what rema revelation more light more revelation piles of books are you following me now king james amplified new living translation the message translation different tapes by different men of god the bible says ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth there are so many believers they go for every program are you following me tonight they do everything they every prayer meeting every night vigil every book in town you buy it whether you read it or not you buy it every book everything but they are the last to put the word of god into practice they have sealed, sealed their mind from coming to a point where they truly believe and they come to a point where they refuse to be convicted by the power of the truth you believe in tithing you can teach about tithing deliver an excellent message about tithing are you following me now you can encourage your roommate shout but you are not a tither these are the kinds of people the bible says ever learning have you tried to confront someone who is suffering spiritually and when you meet him he will tell you his own problem he will tell you and tell you what the solution is but the person is dying of that problem have you have you encountered people like that 
you're trying to tell them i think it's time to get serious god they say look even the bible says it that in the last day they this and that and that say turn to the book of this uh, this chapter one they even give you the other verse and the person is suffering there's nothing as terrible as that hallelujah that you are suffering while you have the solution to your situation bible says it's not just the hearers of the word but the doers of the word the bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them why because it was not mixed with faith i want to ask you a question in i think 2005 or 6 one day now i'm not saying you should practice it this was a rhema the lord stopped me from reading my bible for one week he said i should not open it for one week and the reason was because he said i was pretending like i was interested in studying my bible and growing he said if i were if i were practicing one tenth of the things that i've gathered in my head my life would have been better than it is and so he said hold on before you continue in this your wild religious search that is not producing any result take an inventory of all the notes you've written in different meetings and apply these things to your life and then you will find true change and from that day i made up my mind not to do things as a result of religion how many of us do quiet time six o'clock you are up in the morning and you hate it you hate the god that you hate it you hate everybody that makes you you just laugh as if you like it hallelujah you know all the scriptures about finances but there's nothing to show for it in your life you know all the scriptures about about um favor all the scriptures about the grace of god all the scriptures about everything for me every time i see a particular area of my life not bringing the fullness of the light and i know that i have that word i know that it has not entered my spirit and then i stop lying to myself i sit down and allow the lord to walk on it and let that scripture be seated in me are you getting blessed tonight because there are many people we, we love knowledge and there's nothing wrong with it. Hallelujah. But knowledge that is not applied will not profit you. Are you listening to me? Did you know that for over 70 to 80% of the messages you hear in church, they are not new? Most of them are only a repetition of the things the Holy Spirit has been teaching for years. That many people have refused to obey it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said this some time ago and let me say it again there is a difference between newness and freshness hallelujah for something to be fresh it doesn't mean it's necessarily new are you listening to me the word of god may not always come new but it always comes fresh so you can hear a teaching on faith that you've heard and it can come again but it will come with a freshness that's why you listen to a tape that you've listened to over 20 times and then when you are listening to it the 21st time a light comes in for me the freshness of the word are you following me now and so it's important my first admonishment for us tonight is that we don't just junk ourselves with knowledge and knowledge and knowledge that we don't apply are you getting blessed tonight that's the first admonishment because it's our desire here not just to have a crowd of people come inside and outside and we celebrate and say god is doing great things our definition of great things is not just the number of people that come our definition of great things is those who hear the word receive it understand it apply it and they are transformed by it then empower others to walk in that same reality that is our definition of success hallelujah that you re you believe the word do you believe listen to me do you believe that the word of god is able to give you a beautiful future do you believe it or you are just smiling and say let me quietly believe or before i frown my face and land to drop do you really believe it if nobody is with you and you are in your room alone has it become a reality to you that content in this world is the key to your life and destiny hallelujah do you believe that this word was given by god to guide you to lead
lead you to instruct you to show you the ways of the spirit and the ways of the kingdom do you believe it do you believe that the knowledge of this word and god's principles will set you above in life recession or no recession job or no job nigeria or no nigeria there's nothing wrong with being a nigerian there's nothing wrong with being an african there's everything wrong with being a disobedient person to god's word that's what the bible calls iniquity a willful perpetual and continual state of rebellion and hardness to god's word and his principles can i tell you something brothers and sisters our fathers took this and they took it seriously and it transformed their lives bible says ask for the ancient parts and walk in them i don't know about you but i'm not just preaching this word i truly believe it i believe it i believe that in this word is the secret for life and godliness I believe in the ministry of the holy spirit i'm not just praying in tongues because power came on me and then i saw everybody doing it i said join them more at least those who are praying in tongues were seeing the result do you really believe that praying in tongues can change you do you believe that every time you pray many of you pray in tongues and laugh at yourself you just shy from the mirror and say hey god bro, big person like me like this doing as if i'm a child all these stupid people yet you are praying in tongues you may even be in prayer band let me tell you something the word that you truly believe and take serious stop laughing about what god is not laughing about are you listening to me when god takes a thing seriously take it seriously i don't like satan he's not my friend i have nothing to do with him why because that's exactly the same thing with the lord i don't have any business with demons i don't have any business with all of these things i believe the word of god the word of god is final authority over my life i don't believe the word of god because of the whole burden of being a preacher no not at all i believe god's word it is my daily bread it is my oxygen i believe in the leadership of the holy spirit i believe in the voice of the holy spirit the success of a believer is directly to the voice of God and the word of God let me tell you something show me a man who has everything in this life but lacks the ability to hear and walk with the Holy Spirit and then to live by the principles of God's word I show you the most vulnerable person because he will fall like a leaf at any time the Bible says ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth it's my prayer tonight even as we start this teaching that we will not be ever learning such that the moment they say anything you say ah, i know the scripture they say this you say the rema and say all of this but your life is far from the revelation and the truth that you know that god will deliver us from the form of godliness and bring us into the reality of godliness where we know his principles hallelujah We've been doing a teaching on kingdom economics. Helping us to understand the structure and the principles of God. Even as regards our finances. And I started last week by saying that every true apostolic ministry is put by God to address the needs of the people and the needs of society. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw the multitudes hungry he addressed that need are you listening to me and one of the things that god has committed to us one of the responsibilities is to make sure that we are not just praying in tongues doing very well spiritually doing very well academically and then suffering financially it's unfortunate that the educational system does not have a program designed to teach people God's ways of wealth and prosperity that's landed people in trouble the average person I said last week the average person our concept of prosperity is get up go to school do very well get good grades and hope one day that somebody will employ you and then if you do your best maybe one day you can just hit a fortune and then your life will change hallelujah and then with the current recession parents and people are languishing people are living in fear every day 
the concept of godfatherism and godmotherism everybody is looking for every human anchor i've said it in this place but let me repeat it i beg you i can go on my knees and beg you take your eyes off men are you listening to me men will disappoint you again and again and again the bible says woe to him who puts his strength in a man he said for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail ah my uncle is going to do this for me i'll never suffer in this life you don't know how much my father has you don't know how much my mother has there's one house that they built for us there as soon as my father dies like this we'll sell it and then this and that what kind of life is that and you keep wishing that people die and get out of the scene because you believe there are so many of us especially the guys who are sitting and smiling every time you see your father's paper and you see your name at the wheel you say lord thank you what a destiny i've come to find out that only the word of god can guarantee a secure life do you believe what i'm saying only the word of god we live in a very vulnerable time where if we do not live by the principles of god's word we will suffer and many people have backslidden as a result of finances many homes have been broken as a result of finances and so last week we began by talking about financial freedom how many of us still remember hallelujah we spoke about financial freedom how that financial freedom is not just having money it's amazing how people's concept of wealth and prosperity is just having naira and kobo so you say i have one million in my account i'm rich you are not rich not at all hallelujah how many of us believe is god's desire for you to be prosperous if you really don't believe don't raise your hands you will not go to hell how many of us truly believe don't don't be don't try to no 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 i need you to be serious just lift your hands let me see inside and outside how many of you believe that you will serve god better when you are prosperous hallelujah i am totally convinced this lifestyle of okay let me earn fifty thousand. me my wife i plan to have only two children not more than that and so two children steven and mary two children and then our nice house three bedroom flat no taking visitors and then our little car god just bless us one small jeep and then we live our life how in the world do you want to bless people that way because selfishness has been the order of the day for many people so if you think of wealth from a selfish perspective you don't need much correct but when you think about the kingdom and the agenda of god and the souls that are perishing and how much it costs to bring souls to the knowledge of christ and to equip them you will truly desire the blessings of god hallelujah then we have two categories of people one those who outrightly hate prosperity and that's predominantly because they have tried and used secular means to achieve god's kind of result and so they are reacting to their frustration they forget every time you see all those young boys oh, forget jerry they know what they are touching here and there i said it yes um last week if you refuse to press into certain blessings you will naturally be angry when you see someone getting blessed have you seen someone a lady who just made her hair and someone is frowning what has her hair got to do with your your own life find your way or somebody just cooks a nice meal and you're frowning or you see aaron with his nice suit and just in this boy self. you know it amazes me when people waste their time talking about others and doing not why can't you press in for more hallelujah just sit down and say busy always looking fine oh jerry And so god is teaching us his ways hallelujah so we'll continue from where we stopped last week tithing we're talking about the subject of tithing it's important to talk about the things that connect us to the wealth of heaven please take it seriously take this message very seriously we're going to pray the, the subject of tithing hallelujah i want you to know that your first connection listen your first connection to the abundance of heaven is what your tithe say after me my first connection to the abundance of god is my tithe 
one more time my first connection to the abundance of God is my tithe very very important your tithe is a tenth portion one tenth according to Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 the Bible says that will a man rob God that's an interesting question will a man rob God he said yet you have robbed me but he said wherein have we robbed thee he says what so how do we rob God there are so many armed robbers around who are crying and asking God to open the windows of heaven the Bible says that you have robbed me in tithes and offerings tithes your tithe is a tenth portion of your increase and the blessings and the finances God gives you in Jewish days they didn't use money naira and cobble as it were are you following me now and so the tithe was a tenth portion of their increase from their farm their cattle and all of this for you now the tithe can be the first the tenth portion of your one tenth of your income are you listening to me verse 11 verse 9 sorry it says as a result listen this is a very very dangerous scripture it says ye are cursed with a cause why for ye have robbed me even this whole nation are you seeing that if you refuse to tithe your tithe is not an admonishment it's an instruction are you listening to me the bible says as a result of being negligent in the ministry of tithing there is a cause that comes upon you hear me that's not the cause that is the opposite of abraham's blessings are you listening to me this is a separate cause we are going to be reading it now the word cause there means woe that you make yourself vulnerable to mishaps situations and circumstances that will frustrate your christian work especially your finances this is god speaking he said because you have chosen to rob me according to god's order and god's system the house of god was supposed to be financed and blessed by the tithes and the offering so all of the people are blessed by the priests and then they go and walk when they bring the blessings they take a tenth portion and take it to the storehouse of god hallelujah and then as a result they perform their kingdom obligation and then they are entitled to certain prophetic blessings verse 10 bring ye how many how many bring ye all the tithes into where the storehouse that there may be what this is the purpose of tithe you know many times we pray and say lord as if the tithe will evaporate and, and just fly into heaven and then it will be at the right hand of god no the tithe is to the end that there may be meat in my house hear me the bible says and prove me i put my reputation to stake that if you perform this kingdom obligation prove me say yet the lord of hosts if i will not that's the first blessing i will not what open to you the windows of heaven you know what the windows of heaven is the last time the windows of heaven opened before that time manna and quail is it in your bible fell and fed the people ate and had enough to their food the bible says if i will not open to you the windows of heaven the windows of heaven are not open to you just by prayer and fasting and is by there are certain principles are you following me this is how god designed his system you cannot try to act in another way and expect god's results if i will not open to you the windows of heaven number one number two and pour you out a blessing god will pour a blessing and he describes that blessing he says that there shall not be room enough to receive it i will pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it verse 11 let's see the third blessing and i will what one of the few places if not the only place in the scripture where god says he will do something on your behalf for this for the devil 
every other place he says you cast out devils you rebuke satan but god says on account of tithing i make it a responsibility i'm going to be teaching you what the devourer is the devourer is not an eat the devourer is an activity is a demon spirit are you listening to me the activity of demon spirits over your finances over your health over your blessings have you not seen families that the moment they collect salary everybody just starts getting sick until that last couple finishes that's the activity of the devourer many of our parents think that okay you change a job or get promotion or add another job that's never going to solve you do not solve a spiritual problem using physical means hallelujah it says that i will rebuke the devourer this devourer is the one in charge of all of this recession and the rest a great servant of god called apostle les kraus was having a time of prayer traveling in the spirit and suddenly he was caught up in the spirit and he went into a room and he saw certain demons satan and two other demons hallelujah and then they were discussing talking about different things about the saints and he was standing and watching hallelujah and one of the demon just looked at him and the holy spirit told him they said the name of that demon is called apollyon and he referred him to the book of revelation where it talks about apollyon are you following me now and then he began to describe the ministry of that demon and all of these things and he said is they are the ones in charge of stopping the finances from reaching the sons of light and then he said something that caught my attention that satan prefers a healthy church than a prosperous church isn't that surprising that means satan will prefer that you have a revelation of divine health than to have a revelation of prosperity you know why because when you are healed you are healed for yourself but when you are blessed you are blessed for others you can't be healed for another person are you following me now so every time you talk about prosperity and finances all hell goes haywire and satan tries to do everything to cripple us and stop us that's the reason why in the world system if you are rising to certain levels of wealth and prosperity what happens they initiate you into an occult remember the freemasons the illuminatis and all of that they tell you okay we want you to join this sect and then they communicate to you the agenda of satan hallelujah so that you will be the one storing the wealth and then you can control the activity of satan and the bible says i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he did you see that he called the devourer a he and he will not destroy that's the fourth blessing he will not destroy the what the fruits of your ground your ground is anywhere you sow it can be your job it can be your business are you following me it can be your academics anywhere you say you will not destroy the fruit of your ground number five neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field there are many people who are involved in projects that can never finish they never start a thing and complete it the bible says that the hand of zerubbabel that has started this work that same hand will complete it all of these things are the curses that come as a result of not being a faithful and a diligent tither it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground he said neither shall your vine cast her fruit before its time saith the lord verse 12 he said and all nations shall do what all nations shall call you blessed because the lord will so bless you that that is going to be your testimony not just in your village not just in your community he said all nations will testify that truly this is the blessed of the lord and the last blessing the seventh blessing for ye shall be a delightsome land ye shall be a delightsome land it's interesting the bible uses a metaphor it says you shall be a delightsome land not like you shall be a delightsome land hallelujah and so many of you can now see the reason why although you love god although you are praying in tongues certain things in your life are not just moving 
because you have not yet begun to operate the spiritual principles that will activate these things can i tell you something about the word of god every word that you see inspired of the spirit by the way let me just digress and say something i shared with a few people yesterday i just feel like chipping it in we're learning a lot of things tonight look up please we call this the bible hallelujah but let me tell you something not every word that is written here please don't stone me please don't stone me yet not every word that is written here is called the word of god hallelujah in this bible demon spoke is that correct in this bible satan spoke in this bible unbelievers spoke is that correct please follow me <laughs> in this bible jesus himself spoke in this bible false prophets spoke are you following me now so when the bible gives us the future of what he calls the word of god the word of god is any part in this bible that is able to give you spirit and life it says the words that i speak this is the proof that they are from me they will give you spirit and life so not every word that is written here as it were is life-giving many of you want to attack me the scripture that says the bible says all scripture was inspired of the holy ghost and is for our profiting calm down let me explain this to you please let me have two people aaron and someone just come let me use you hallelujah now look up i want to explain to you the difference between a true statement and a statement of truth are you following me now so that we can understand the bible and the word of god and get blessed from it look at this josiah is a lady hallelujah is that a true statement that's not a true statement is that correct but if aaron tomorrow is recording all the activities that happen in koinonia and he's writing it he will say while josh was speaking he said i follow me now he said josiah is a lady that's a statement of truth because i really said it but is that a true statement no there are many statements of truth so what the holy ghost did in the bible was to breathe upon people so that they can record the events as it happened whether it's life-giving or not that the supernatural ability of the holy spirit came upon them so that they gave the details and the intricacies of scripture now it's left for the holy spirit to fine tune and help you search through it and pick out the principles of god and that part that is able to give you life hallelujah people committed atrocities in scripture lots lord's daughters two of them slept with their father hallelujah is that statement life-giving no but did it happen yes are you following me now i'll tell you why i'm saying this i hope you know <laughs> help us lord thank god this is koinonia i hope you know that there are many things that paul said in the bible that are wrong according to the character of god's word hallelujah Paul was a man like every other man this is where I'm driving to there are many people who have taken just anything how many of us have had that statement if it's in the Bible I will do it I'll never show you the scripture but I can I can show you a place in in the Bible where Paul permits a woman to sleep with a man is Paul Jesus Christ I hope you know that Paul was also judged and will also be judged Jesus Christ is the perfect theology are you following me now whether it's paul or apollos or joshua selman or e and i i'm saying all of us are subject to the integrity of god's word the principles of the kingdom that are contained in that word do you know that every christian sect today uses the bible to practice whatever they are doing the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach any message are you listening to me I can take a scripture and the daughters of lot slept with them that can be my message is it in your bible are you are you getting blessed i can take it and twist it arrange it nicely 
package it for anybody's selfish desire i can just use a scripture and they gave and then i stopped here i say i'm going to expound on that scripture and they gave because it came out of the bible so i am saying that the holy spirit must help us to understand that scattered in these scriptures we call the bible are the statements of satan god false prophets true prophets all kinds of things the holy spirit that's why when you study your bible without the holy spirit you can never get blessed so many people choose the holy spirit and leave the bible or say let's take the bible and leave the holy spirit. no no so when the bible says all scripture was inspired by the holy spirit what he's trying to say is that the holy spirit made everything are you listening to me he made the people to write all of these details but you can't sit down and start claiming and say and lot and um the daughters of lord slept with him and they slept with him and meditating on the word what is the meaning of that there are many things that people did in the bible i hope you know that if we were in bible days maybe they can archive what we are doing now and they can say maybe the epistle of koinonia or something and add it hallelujah do you realize that there are not only 66 books that were written it's in your bible john 21 the bible says there are many other works and miracles that jesus did that were not recorded here but these few have been recorded to the end that we may believe are you following me now I'm not talking of all those demonic and satanic books that everybody has around. Are you getting blessed? I just digress to put this point. So, I can make a statement like this. And although it's incorrect, but it was contained in the Bible. And then many people just take it hook, line, and sinker. God bless you, sir. I'm just trying to tell you that you must press and get the reality of god's word not just scripture to put in your head are you listening to me you must get the spirit and the life of the word of god i have another challenge for you for those of you who have studied bible history i hope you know that in the days of paul and ananias these 66 books were not there are you following me question what did they call their own word of god because it was long after they died i hope you know that that their epistles were archived together by the spirit of god and brought to what we call today the bible at that time they had only the law and the prophets and the law and the prophets was not given to everyone it was kept in the temple so when they said the word of god is quick and powerful what was their word of god hmm. sila we're talking about finances let's go back hallelujah and so your tithe opens you up to the blessings of god can i tell you something brothers and sisters please look up you are not doing god i will say it again and again you are not doing god nor pastors nor ministers nor any church or ministry a favor when you pay your tithe are you listening to me if you understand God's system and the operation of God's system, you will realize that when you pay your tithe, you are climbing the ladder, you are opening up yourself to financial abundance. Hallelujah. No matter how hard you work, no matter what other principles and laws you know, if you are not a tither, you will never get blessed God's way. You can get blessed through any other means. But I'm telling you, you will never get blessed God's way. And every time you are prosperous in a way that is not of God, the Bible says, do not envy the wicked. Their end is destruction. Are you getting blessed tonight? And so God wants us to be faithful titans. It's one way of being open to the things of heaven. Abraham gave a tenth a tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek blessed abraham he said blessed be abraham possessor of the heavens and the earth hezekiah gave his tithe he gave a tithe and a tenth portion there are many of us that have this mindset 
that God wants my money. He wants to take my money. How can I give tithe when I have only 5,000 naira pocket money? Or my mother gave her tithe before she gave us. Our parents give tithe. As big as you are, you say your parents give tithe. Can I tell you something? Every finance that comes into your hand that is yours for your profiting and your consumption, you should tithe from it. You cannot tithe your school fees because it's not money for your consumption. Are you listening to me? Don't let anybody manipulate you and maneuver you and say, just bring it. You know, women of God like money. Just bring it. Say, school fees. Say, yes, bring it. Remove 10%. No. No. God gives us wisdom. You can, they cannot give you money to keep for a project. For maybe you, you are keeping money for a group. And then you get up and just say, our lives must move forward. Without their consent and everything, you just tithe and do all. no 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 the bible doesn't teach us to be foolish people but the bible teaches us to be doers of the word say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither one more time in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither for the last time in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a faithful tither hallelujah is so important so your first connection to the economy of heaven is your tithe now how does god bless us as titans this is why I, this is what i want to tell you because many believers do not know how the blessing comes how does the blessing come there are two principal ways god releases the blessing number one the favor of god favor with god and with men this is one vehicle of receiving the blessing of God as a result of your tithing. Favor with God and favor with men. Please write it. Number one, favor. That's how the blessing is channeled. Favor with God and favor with men. Number two, ideas, concepts, and insights. Ideas, concepts, an insight Samadhi and me wrote a book ideas rule the world if you can if you can lay your hands on the book you can read it a very powerful book ideas concepts and insights can i tell you something the bible says in exodus 31 it says i have called bezalel and i have anointed him with the spirit of wisdom and creativity to uh, do all kinds of craftsmanship and this and that. There is something called the spirit of Bezalel. God giving you ideas, concepts, insight. In Job 32 verse 8, the Bible says, there is a spirit in man and the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty maketh him of understanding. These are the principal ways that God channels these blessings to us the earth concepts ideas insights are you listening to me you are a faithful tighter and you just sit down and god just opens you up look at the gentleman who came and shared the testimony about his book i follow me now god gives him what insights you're just sitting and god gives you an idea I hope you know that when God gives you one idea, it can you can bring a generational blessing to your generation. Just one idea from the Lord. Most of the people who brought inventions to our world today were people who were faithful and they adhered to God's principles. So favor suddenly doors begin to be open unto you. God brings favor. He was saying he was just sitting down and a text message just came into his phone. Many of you do not believe in this manifestation of God. Where strangers come to feed your flock. A stranger just calls you and says, give me your account. And I say, forget Jared, they are just your friend or a stranger. I'll never forget in 2007, someone called me 6, 10 in the morning called me shaking under the anointing and said, is this Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, send me your account. Number. I said, ah, who are you? He said, that's not the most important thing. God gave me an instruction. Send me your account number. And that was the first time I began to see this manifestation of strangers. Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai said that one time they needed some money 
and then from the morning God instructed him they gave tight and they did everything he said he came to the drawer of his office and suddenly the Holy Spirit just told him open your drawer and he opened and he saw the exact amount in an envelope written to him nobody could have accessed his office he called his secretary and said what is this say I don't know anything about it many of you do not believe in these manifestations these are the blessings that come on account of being faithful titans see I'm telling you this take it seriously take it seriously many of our parents would have been better people today if they had the opportunity to receive these teachings are you listening to me and so the favor of God and wisdom ideas concepts insights hallelujah when you are a faithful titan number two your offerings the bible says in tithes and offerings we connect to the economy of heaven with our offerings and our givings really not just your offerings but your your giving luke 6 38 luke chapter 6 verse 38 can you help me media luke 6 38 the bible says give and it shall be given unto thee it shall be given unto you give and it shall be given listen listen let me show you something powerful it says give and it shall be given unto you this is how many of us read the scripture let it be given unto me then i will give hallelujah many people say lord if only you bless me make me a millionaire and see what i'll do god is saying you will never become one it is your giving that will make you one are you listening to me don't ever see isn't it amazing that whenever you need breakthrough from god god will demand from you the bible talks about a, a widow in zarafat it says that she was about to eat her last meal with her son and perish and the bible says that god sent a prophet to her and when he went he said please bring me water and while she was going he said and prepare a morsel of bread for me too and she got angry she said ah, i'm about to eat the last one so that we'll die isn't it amazing that when your resources are running red that's when god begins to demand that you give many people feel that that's when he wants to destroy and kill your resources that's the way he connects you to the blessing of heaven if your mindset does not change you'll be a greedy and a stingy person and you will never truly grow and be blessed are you following me the bible says give and it shall be given unto you and then it tells you how it i mean the, the quantity he said good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over <laughs> interesting shall so your blessing is in the hands of men shall men give unto you if every one of us here becomes a millionaire i hope you know that one million will not fall from heaven it's already in circulation in the hands of men but when you perform your kingdom obligation are you following me now god will cause by the wisdom of his spirit and by the manifestation of wisdom in your life for now what we call the wealth of the wicked to find its way into the hand of the righteous he said for with the same measure that ye meet without shall it be measured unto you so never say the size of your seed does not matter hello say god just give god anything no no at the same time don't let anybody twist your hand i'm going to be showing you some things about giving are you following me now because there are too many people that have twisted the hands of god's people because they want gain second corinthians chapter 9 second corinthians chapter 9 so your giving is one way hallelujah second corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 but this i say unto you listen he which soweth sparingly listen he that sows shall reap is that correct he that sows sparingly shall reap but he shall reap what is it in your bible you can choose to believe it 
and comply to the principles or just argue with it and trivialize it he said he that soweth sparingly he shall reap sparingly and he that soweth what bountifully shall also reap bountifully now verse 7 is where i want to challenge a lot of the wrong teachings about giving seven every man according as what he has proposed in his heart not according to how they twisted his hands let me tell you something the bible does not teach that gospel of coercing and threatening people into giving that's very satanic that's very demonic i don't care who is doing it it's not consistent with god's word hallelujah to say if you don't give you will die if you have up to twenty thousand naira in your account and you don't bring out money tomorrow you'll be caused no sir the bible doesn't teach that he said every man according as he has purposed in his heart you can be encouraged to give you can hear a word and it will provoke you and ginger you to give more are you listening to me that if you empty your account today let it be that you were convicted or instructed by the spirit and that you are doing it cheerfully cheerfully doesn't mean you are laughing cheerfully just means from a gladdened heart because sometimes you will cry sometimes it will be your isaac am i blessing you tonight it says let him not give grudgingly brothers and sisters one of the reasons why so many believers give and don't get blessed is because they give grudgingly hallelujah i cannot tell you how i've counseled people over the years who come and meet me and say they force me to drop my phone they force me to remove my shoe they force me to remove my head tie they for that ministry of forcing 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 the man of god doing it may not be fake but i'm telling you that principle is not consistent with the character of the word of god i apologize if i if i seem to condemn I, I don't preach condemnation are you listening to me but i need to address this truth because i want to help us it says what for god loves who a cheerful giver it doesn't mean he loves a smiling giver he loves a giver who does things from his heart have you seen people who drop seeds immediately afterwards they just came to the man of god and say sorry oh i'll not lie to you that thing that i dropped i don't know what came upon me they just forced me give back my thing that's my father's handset verse 8 verse 8 It says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto all good works so by your giving god will bless you listen hear me your giving is not by force your giving is a choice hallelujah your giving is a choice the bible talks of giving god your tithe your first fruit there is also the principle of first fruit the principle of first fruit is a way of honoring god are you listening to me it was a jewish custom well it really existed before the jewish custom it really wasn't in the law are you listening to me for those of you who have been taught that tithing is part of the law no tithing started way before the law alongside with principle of first fruit and the rest the bible tells us that cain and abel came and cain gave of his firstlings and his fat and i mean abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings hallelujah and cain just put vegetables on the on the altar and then nothing happened he wasn't blessed so it's a way of showing god that he's first in your life and even in your resources are you listening to me that if many people do it in different ways they can give their salary for january or their earnings for january or their first salary when they are when they get a job that also is not compulsory the only compulsory thing in scripture is your tithe every other thing is a revelation is an admonishment but if you love your life just like salvation is not compulsory however it has consequences one of it is failure in this life the second one which is the greatest is hellfire hallelujah praise the lord are you getting blessed tonight hallelujah so this is very 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 important for us to understand Proverbs chapter 3 
verse 9 and 10 he says honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all that increase proverbs chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10 it says honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase verse 10 so shall thy bands be filled with plenty he says so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine these are the blessings that follow those who are serious with honoring the Lord with their first fruit and with the increase of their substance. It's amazing when you count the offerings in church, you see 10 naira, 5 naira. Immediately after that, you see gala, 15 naira. Um, juice, you see people buy all kinds of things. A rich man comes with 1 million and just squeezes um, 15 naira, just counts it and just squeezes in the offering. Give him, give him, I will give. And as his passage, just drop it. And you are frowning. Listen, it's our revelation of God. You must come to a point where you esteem God. I cannot be spending 200 naira eating a meal. Spending 10,000 naira buying clothes. And then when it comes to investing and securing, the Bible says, lay not for yourself treasure on the earth here where armed robbers can come and steal it and where it gets he said lay treasure i hope you know that you have a heavenly account read my time in heaven by richard sigmund and he gives us a picture of the bank in heaven and the activities there that every time a believer tithes and he gives it is credited to him in heaven i know that these things sound very childish and it sounds like cartoon but it's true whether or not you believe it there is a heavenly account it is credited by your giving so number one your tithing number two your giving number three your kingdom investments i'm teaching you your supernatural connection to the economy of heaven kingdom investments when there's a project on ground when when i hope you know there's with time maybe not now i will show us that the reason why the years of hezekiah was averted was because they gave and they gave they sold and gave diligently to the advancement of the house of god can i tell you something you must come to a point where you realize that your financial commitment in the house of god is not just a favor you are doing god it's a kingdom responsibility the purpose of right is so that you can be a responsible citizen so if you know that your right in christ is for you to be prosperous you must realize that god designed his house to flourish by the givings of god's people hallelujah take away that mindset that makes it look like pastors are just here to give and chop your money and do all of these things are you listening to me so your tithe your supernatural connection your tithe there are blessings that come from it your giving your commitment in the house of the lord i'm not just talking of financial commitment alone are you listening to me i'm talking of the commitment your time your efforts your energy he said they that be planted in the house of god they will flourish in the courts of god he said in all age they will still bear fruit these are the blessings that follow those who are serious with god and can commit their finances to god hallelujah so every time let me tell you something for a very long time i thought this concept of tithing and offering was just a manipulation of people to walk in my on my mind and i know that there are people who do it every meeting is offering meeting every meeting i've said it here your seed does not do everything for you hello i'll say it again your seed cannot do everything for you Otherwise, millionaires would have been the most successful people, spiritually free, free from demons, free from everything. Satan is still oppressing the rich, oppressing the poor. Your seed cannot do everything. The Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. However, your seed can secure a glorious destiny. The Bible says in Genesis 8, I believe, verse 11, 12, it says, as far as the earth remains, am I correct? seed time and harvest 
Genesis 8, right? Yeah, 22, sorry. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest. Are you seeing this? The Bible is giving you God's principle. It says so long as the earth remains, it's a law. Seed time. Whenever you sow, you will reap. Seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Question, has cold and heat stopped? Has summer and winter stopped? Has day and night stopped? Why will seed time and harvest stop? Let me ask you a question. How many of you have planted seeds in your farm and you went back the next and said, you must grow. There are certain laws in the spirit that once you obey them, they engage themselves and move into action immediately. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I want to talk about one other issue and then we'll round up for now. I want to talk about the concept of the attitude for giving and then your storehouse. You must, especially your tithing. I want us to just dwell a little on that tithing. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Look at me. God doesn't just want your money. Don't carry your tithe. For many of you, your attitude towards giving and tithing has a long way to go in bringing blessings to your life. Many of you just come and then when you see a man of God or see offering basket or they say tithe has come out, you just say, ah, it's true. You just squeeze one. You just bring all of them and say, ah, this is a new one from the bank. You just bring out one very dirty tata thing. You say, ah, the, the finance department will use super glue. And then you just bring it out. And then you come and stand and squeeze it. And while they are praying, you are busy eyeing people. And you come and say, God, Shebi, you have disturbed me. Take. Oh yeah, bring the, bring the blessing for me. Your attitude buy envelopes package your tithe do it with revelation and can i tell you something do not drop your tithe anywhere they will not pray and speak a blessing for you that's the connection are you listening to me it's not just say ah tithe then bless just over his boy as a pussy jerry and then say bye bye no no in jewish days they didn't just drop tight like that there was a prophetic blessing that was spoken upon it it is that blessing that will activate that law are you listening to me this is very powerful that's why every time people bring tithes no matter how busy i am i say no hold on every time you drop a tithe and the man of god doesn't say anything politely demand and say sir i request that you speak a prophetic word and not just anything you like you don't just speak what you wish you can speak that on an offering but there is a specific blessing for it for the tithe are you listening to me you cannot listen. You can't drop tight and then I say, go. Your house will experience exponential blessing. No, that's not the blessing that is tied to tithing. The Bible makes us to understand that there are seven prophetic blessings. And so it's your job to prophesy these blessings and release it upon the tithers. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? I submit to you. These are not things that I read in textbooks alone. These are realities by, that by the grace and the mercy of God we are abiding by. There's one thing to teach something you know or you read from a book. There is another thing when you are teaching your reality. Are you listening to me? This is the reality. By the grace of God, the treasurer is here and, and, and the financial secretary is here. From the time Koinonia started, there is no week we have not tithed as a ministry. How in the world are we not going to be blessed and rich? Are you listening to me? That's why we keep increasing from glory to glory in our finances. There's no magic about it. Look at the young people that are responsible for this and look at what God is doing. Doesn't it tell you there is a supernatural dimension to it? We have been faithful by the grace of God. As a ministry to his glory, we do not owe God one naira. That's why every time he keeps giving us ideas, concepts, like he said he will, inside that's why he rebukes the devourer for our sake every time i'm praying over the tithe of ENI, i i say lord everyone who comes under the covering of ENI, i i attach them to the blessings of this tithing that's why some of you have not been tithing yet you have been prospering we have been praying for you but now god is teaching you so that you can begin to move into certain levels of blessing 
Say, ah, that's the secret. I'll be chopping my tight and quietly be coming for Friday meetings. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of you need to teach. Do you know that for many of you, this is the solution to the cry of your families? They think it's more jobs or more. It's not. I've said this thing again and again. I don't know how many times I'm going to emphasize. If you think that you are going to work for every blessing you get in this life, get, re get ready to die. Guys, you want to build a house. How much is one block? How much is one block? If you want to work for everything, I know many of us like working. <laughs> get set to die young. There is the blessing of the Lord. There is the blessing of the Lord. I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with your age. Many of you say, where do I start from? I don't have anything. I have been owing God and all of that. We'll not talk about storehouse. We're out of time. Hallelujah. But have you gotten something tonight? To understand that your tithe is a spiritual obligation. Every time you package your tithe, brothers and sisters never you think god just wants your money i hope you know before you were born heaven was made of, of the streets of gold and it, it didn't increase the gold the size of the gold didn't increase because you were born let me tell you something friends god wants to bless us the bible says he who did not withhold his son but offered him how much more with him will he not give us freely all things god wants you to prosper say it after me god wants me to prosper Many of you say, eh, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any business. I'm not doing anything. Before your business will come, you can be stepping into the prosperity of God. The purpose of business and all of these things and all those ideas and laws we put is to continue the flow and to prove your faithfulness and to position yourself for increase. Hallelujah. You can begin to activate these principles right now. And see favor come into your life. But many of you say, Ah, Shay, you are just talking because you are a man of God. Everybody knows you. Say, Every week at least somebody must bring offering. Was I born a man of God? Hallelujah. Obedience to the word of God. You may be sitting down and say, Okay, our family, where do we start from? Call your parents. Collect these teachings and send home. And tell them, Please, let's begin to tithe. Let's begin to tithe. Kenneth Copeland was in debt. One of the richest, the wealthiest ministers, the principal partner of Reinhard Bonke's ministry. I hope you know that. Kenneth Copeland is the major partner behind Reinhard Bonke's ministry that has come to bless many of us in this country. Hallelujah. And when he came, he was in debt of over $250,000. There was nothing he didn't do. And then God showed him this scripture and he made up his mind hallelujah he said he will never collect debt can i tell you something friends look up stop collecting debt we'll talk about that maybe next week stop it i thought i could never do without it many of you think you cannot do without it things will change the day you make up your mind hallelujah i told myself no more borrowing money and as a personal principle i'm not saying you should do it i don't borrow people money i give because the bible says i found in my bible oh no man nothing but love i said that's it that is it i don't borrow people money i don't care how much i rather tell you okay i cannot meet that level but this is what i can give you that's why i love people because there's nobody i see and frown and say see let me tell you this night you will see me in your room hallelujah many of you borrow money for trivial things you borrow money to make your hair is that is that wisdom hallelujah you borrow money to buy fridge and make your room you borrow money to buy a blackberry for yourself then you come back and find out that it's only the case that is left you borrow money to do all kinds of things see you may be tongue talking but these are some of the things that we do that land us in trouble many of our parents they borrow money and buy tire of car is that an asset you go to the bank you collect heavy loan is the credit system that is killing americans 
thank God for Nigeria. I'm proud of being a Nigerian. There's no credit system here. If you don't have it, cash, trust God for it. If you don't have it, manage what you have. In, 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 in America and the rest, you can build an empire on credit and leave your children and your children. There are people, America, for many of you who want to run their safe journey, let me tell you, America is the country that is owing debt most in the world. 170 trillion US dollars. That's America's debt. Are you listening to me? 20 billion is added every day. Let me give you statistics. So you, you see the kind of future they are putting for their children. Their children will wake up with a yoke they will not recover from. But the Bible says for us, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Stop envying them and thinking that their life is nice. Nice for what? They eat hamburgers in credit, sausages in credit, beautiful jeeps, and then they use some and push it down to Nigeria, and they laugh at us. They say this, and we are trusting God. Lord, I trust you. I can start with the Tokumbo, 600,000. By faith, you start. When you buy a car, you buy is yours. proud of being a Nigerian teaches us to be patient and to move at God's pace at your age in America you'd have had a house and a car that you didn't pay for so they tell you when you start working then you start reducing it then many of the rich people this is a satanic agenda what you call the recession today is a byproduct of the wickedness of a select few people who are playing the world like a chess hallelujah are you getting blessed so many of you who are happy when you hear in the news that they want to introduce the credit system in nigeria you say yes we'll stop suffering in abu by the time you calculate how much you have spent on credit from 100 level till final year you will turn and see that you are owing 20 million you see as young as i am god wants to bless me say it after me god wants to bless me I believe God's ways and I will apply them rise up on your feet let's pray thank you Jesus for tonight just pray in tongues for one minute say Lord grace to be a doer of the word that greedy and selfish spirit that makes believers not to tithe that makes believers not to commit themselves in giving not to commit themselves in kingdom sacrifices go ahead and say lord i take authority over that spirit that makes me think that god wants to finish my resources make sure you are praying grace to be a tighter in the name of jesus grace to be diligent in my tithing grace to be diligent in my tithing, pray grace to be diligent. God's principles will never fail. It will work in Zaria, it will work in Joss, it will work in America, it will work in your village, it will work in your family. I don't care what situation you are in now or how much debt you are in. The word of God can bring you out. Make up your mind young and old to begin to live by the principles of the kingdom hallelujah meditate on these things first timothy 4 verse 15 give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly unto them that your profiting will appear unto all hallelujah i like you to believe it for many of you it will start this night i tell you the truth many of you will begin to take authority you don't take authority over the devourer just by crying and laughing hallelujah i want to encourage everyone we'll be doing this all through this series i want to encourage everyone right now to bring out a seed in your hand we don't do this but let me tell you something i will cheat you if i don't engage you in this are you listening to me bring out 
a seed and we are going to pray we are going to activate this and pray and say we take authority over the devourer please bring out a seed if you don't have a seed just hold the hands of someone we are not just talking about your money are you listening to me we are not just saying your money your money many of you when you hear bring out a seed you start frowning keep your money if you don't believe what we are doing it's a spiritual principle to bless us and to cause us to prosper it's our desire that everyone will prosper tight in your business tight in your company tight as a fellowship tight as a church be faithful in it tight as husband and wife as a couple as a family do it practice it hallelujah bring out bring out your seed and we are going to pray right now you're going to lift it up and pray and say lord i take authority over the devourer in my life and my family go ahead and pray and say satan take your hands off my finances take your hands off the finances of my family all the blessings the financial blessings that are mine in Christ I receive it make sure go ahead and pray I position myself for increase I position myself for increase if you don't have any seed on your hand connect with a brother or a sister that has a seed it will still work for you we rebuke the devourer in our midst in the name of Jesus we are faithful tithers grace to be faithful tithers grace to be givers grace to be givers grace to commit ourselves in the house of God grace to commit ourselves go ahead and pray say I break greed I break selfishness. I come against the spirit of greed. That spirit that makes me feel God wants to take all my money. Go ahead and pray. I position myself for increase. I position myself for prosperity. I position myself for blessings. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want the Lord is my shepherd I refuse to lack go ahead break the power of lack in your life I break free from poverty I break free from lack I have abundance I have abundance in the name of Jesus for the sake of God's glorious kingdom I have abundance I refuse to live from hand to mouth my God supplies all my needs according to his riches second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says you know the grace of our lord that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that he through his poverty might become rich we break the hand of luck and poverty hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point very quickly you're going to call forth favor into your life and call forth ideas concepts and insights say lord i call forth favor let it begin to flow in my life favor everywhere i go come on pray men begin to run over themselves to bless me i am blessed in the city i am blessed in the country my gates are continually open to receive the forces of the gentiles strangers will feed my flock in the name of jesus i walk in abundance i suck honey from the rock in the name of jesus prosperity is my heritage in christ i walk in it i refuse poverty i reject poverty it comes from satan
Alléluia. 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 I want to prophesy over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that as you leave this place, the Lord will give you a sign that this message is from him and for your finances. This week I prophesy that next Saturday, next Friday, there will be tons and tons of testimonies, supernatural financial blessings. I release it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus strangers men that you do not know i call them forth the bible calls god the father of spirits begin to speak to those spirits my father i call forth favor everywhere your finances have been tied down for yourself for your family there are many people that are owing your parents this week in the name of jesus i command favor 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 let every closed financial door be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and cast your seeds and begin to pray in the spirit. As you cast your seeds just in one minute, ushers, let's do it quickly. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, we give because we believe. We give to activate your word in our lives. We give because we believe. Inside and outside, go ahead and pray. Lord, we give because we believe. We expect a performance. We expect a performance by the Spirit of the Lord God. We expect a performance. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance unto her there shall be a performance unto you go ahead and pray in tongues i position myself for the blessings of the lord hallelujah hallelujah take our time this week study the following scriptures please very quickly very quickly hallelujah genesis 8 22 genesis 8 22 genesis 8 22 proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 Hallelujah Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39 Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 39 Isaiah chapter 45 Verse 2 and 3. Hmm. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48 verse 17. It says, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Ye know the grace of our Lord that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 11. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 1 to 10 the whole chapter Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 to 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 
hallelujah let's stop there for now lord we thank you for this meeting tonight we receive grace to be doers of your word in the name of jesus we expect a performance by your spirit now if you are worshiping with us for the first time very quickly i'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here in your Lift up your hands and worship him. Lord, we give you praise. Go ahead and pray in other tongues. Go ahead and pray in other tongues. My kingdom comes. Tell him, Father, I've come tonight for an encounter. I didn't come to waste my time. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain.
like for your heart to be prepared for what God is doing I like for your heart to be prepared because like my brother rightly said God is going there is a carriage of the spirit the Bible says and Elijah stood and told Elisha I'm about to go and the Bible says he looked up and saw a chariot that came to take him to another realm and Elisha said my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof we trust the Lord that there is a carriage of the spirit that will take us into a new plane and a new dimension a realm of intimacy that this earth cannot contain you again oh take us to realms of the glory there is a mandate upon our generation And say Lord this is me I have not come to join the crowd tonight Genesis chapter 28. Lord, as in the days of old, cause men to know your glory, cause men to see new dimensions, new realms, levels, and spheres in the spirit. Paul said, I know a man who was caught up to heaven, whether in the body or not in the body, I do not know, but he had things that are not permitted to be spoken in this world. There is a realm of the glory. There is a path that our fathers walked in. The Bible says there is a path where the lion has not walked. And there is a place where the eyes of the vulture has not seen. The man of God calls it impossible places. 
that is where we are taking a journey in the spirit to explore the riches went out from Bathsheba and went towards Haran and he came to a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set meaning he was tired he was weary and the Bible says and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep 12 and he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and the top of it reached the heavens and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am I am I am he didn't say I was he didn't say I will be he stood at the top of it and he said I am I am I am I am hear me friends in every generation God leaves a remnant God sections out a people who will pursue him great men like Tom Tenney call them God Jesus and God begins to search for men and women to seek him so that he will reveal dimensions and facets of himself because he said I am I am whatever you can think I am I am above your imagination but I can reveal myself to you in fragments and pieces when you seek me you will find me and the Bible makes us to understand that Jacob had an encounter and first of all he saw angels the portals were opened up to him and the Bible says standing at the very top of his was Yahweh himself and he said I am he didn't try to hear God he was standing face to face with his maker and he said I am in Exodus 33 the Bible tells us how that Moses entered a cloud and the glory of God came and built a tabernacle in front of him and the Bible says God spoke Moses spoke with God face to face hear me friends there is a realm of encounter beyond the average Christian life there is a realm of intimacy there is a dimension of koinonia in the spirit men when you study through church history and revivals you see great men and women who touched certain realities the Bible says uh, uh, Peter speaking I believe he said I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded there is a level of encounter that brings a persuasion you are not trying to guess hallelujah and it has pleased the Lord that in this time and in this season that he will find the people who are saying Lord I have been anointed I have healed the sick before Lord I'm a great man there are dimensions I have touched but something inside of me tells me there is more something inside of me tells me there is a higher dimension greater than ministry greater than just healing the sick greater than just doing these average things that we glory about Jesus said you will see greater things than this 
He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you will see the heavens open and you will see the Son of Man. The angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Be seated. God bless you. Koinonia is not just a meeting that was put together just to gather people and to talk and to make noise. No. Koinonia is a prophetic agenda. Hallelujah. The system of God is such that when God wants to lure you, He uses hunger to lure men into His presence. The Bible says that God has put eternity in the heart of man. And so every time you have accomplished things and, and made certain levels of progress in the spirit, the eternity dimension of God has a way of swallowing you up so that it brings you to that point of real hunger. Koinonia is not a meeting for everyone, friends. It's a meeting for as many who can say, Lord, I know that there is more. Great women like Catherine Kuhlman walked in levels of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. They were willing to trade their lives if they would spend five minutes without Him. The apostles of old shook their generations not because of a hearsay. They had a real encounter with a real God that produced real results. The error in our generation today and the, the, the ambiguity that surrounds the things of God is a direct indication that there is a level of intimacy we are yet to come in. Hallelujah. And I trust God that the Lord will bring us into levels of intimacy. Levels of real experiences with Him. Hear me friends, there are certain levels of walk with God and intimacy where great men like Enoch walked. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and he was not. He walked in such a level of proximity with God that this earth could not hold his body. I cannot tell you how many times I cry in my spirit when I see the average life of a believer I tell you the truth almost 80 to 90 percent of believers really do not know the Holy Spirit it's obvious and so many people cannot manifest the character of the kingdom because we do not understand we do not know who the Holy Spirit is how come we came from a realm that is now so foreign to us how come the reality of the person of the Holy Spirit even those of us who call ourselves men of God compared to the standard of God are only toddlers in the things of the Spirit and tonight I invite you into an experience koinonia is not a meeting is an experience second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 Paul speaking to the Corinthian church said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the koinonia of the spirit the word koinonia is a greek word that means intimacy through communion intercourse participation sharing together fellowship and that's what god has called us into he has not called us into religion he has called us into oneness participation partnership a level of intimacy where we interact so much with him that we become like him and it is the overflow our lives become a reflection of where we have been everyone knows that we are products of our environment when I look at your life I can tell you where you have spent most of your time because that has that's what has built your mindset and so when we dwell in his presence there is an interaction between humanity and divinity there is a rub off of his glory and his nature his life and his character that comes upon you so that when you stand out indeed you can you can be an ambassador you cannot be an ambassador of a government and a king that you do not know hallelujah and so koinonia is a place of encounter the bible says that jacob had an encounter Koinonia is not just a meeting that was put for all of us to just get excited and come and watch the new things the Holy Ghost is doing.
it's a meeting for as many who will hunger there are many of you that have cried in the secret place and said god there is more i know that there's got to be more young and old there are many of us here that have desired god and said lord i know that there are depths and there are dimensions many of us have had bits and pieces of experiences many of us have seen jesus a few of us have been caught up to heaven or certain realms in the spirit but this is a higher dimension of intimacy hear me friends the greatest revival that is about to come i've been saying this thing for years our fathers prophesied it and they died without seeing it but they left a prophecy on earth as they went to heaven they said a revival will come greater than the phoenix revival greater than the azusa street revival and what an honor to be alive at this point because the spirit of god is training and building men and women with whom he will trust the life the power the character the grace of the spirit so that they can be ambassadors friends i welcome you to koinonia the place of intimacy the place of participation where you will be groomed and trained in the things of the spirit that your eyes will be open to see him as he is and then you can be able to sing like isaiah sang the train of his robe fill the temple a crowd of heavenly worshipers surrounding his throne we join with them now crying holy holy is the lamb the lamb of god i see the i trust god that this will become an experience not just a song a great man who had lived his life doing great things for the kingdom but the bible says in the year that king Uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord and he saw a dimension of glory he never believed existed now you must realize that he was a prophet and so spiritual encounters were not strange things but he saw a new wave and a new dimension like many of you will be seeing let me tell you something many of you will live in certain realities that you never dreamt were possible there are dimensions of god that when you encounter the issue of pride and arrogance will not be there again you are not trying to be humble the imprint of that encounter leaves a mark in your life forever us truly desire intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Friends, I am convinced that intimacy with the Holy Spirit should be the number one pursuit of every believer. I am absolutely convinced. Did you know, friends, that all the things we are trying to look for can be found in the secret place? The place of intimacy is where you can get anything believe me anything it's amazing how satan has distracted us we run around trying to do many things and the solution is there in his presence no wonder moses said do not let us leave here without your presence if your presence go not with us we will not depart from here the psalmist said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your holy spirit from me I don't know what my life will be without the Holy Spirit. Indeed, I know what it means to be a dead man without the Holy Spirit. Is my 
life. He's my friend. He's my God. And I trust that the Lord will introduce us to a house where we will hear his voice, where we will walk in his path, where we will live his life. When you are intimate with the Holy Spirit, the world will know. They cannot deny it. There is an imprint that the intercourse of his presence brings. And you will shock your world with insight and wisdom and illumination that does not belong to this realm. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. To hear your voice once again to see your face that's our desire once again to know your ways once again to live your life once again can you tell him Lord once again I cannot, I cannot begin to pour out my heart to you friends how much that the Lord wants us to enter realms of intimacy I was sleeping yesterday night and I had an encounter while sleeping and in the sleep someone walked up to me and he said son you are about to start a move and bring many to realms of intimacy and he said look up and I looked and the sky was it was as though it was red and clouds sounds everywhere and I said Lord what is this and he said it's the rain of the revival but it will be for men and women who know my presence it was a very deep encounter it left a mark in my spirit I just woke up quiet and silent and God said I will show men things that they did not realize can be seen there are realms, there are dimensions, but until you touch those realities in the spirit, you will struggle in your Christian work. Until you touch those realms in the spirit, all of these things we are saying will be strange. I trust that many of us will come into an encounter where you will see Jesus stand before you and hold your hands and say, I am your maker. I want to lead you and describe to you the purpose of your life the bible says blessed is she that believes koinonia is the place of possibilities there is no impossibility with god my life has changed today not because i love god so much but he gave me an encounter that left a mark in my spirit when jesus stood before me and i saw him i saw him as he is i know he's alive not because i read it in the bible i have seen him i've had koinonia a light came out from him and entered into my spirit and it has left a mark in my life friends there is a place of encounter greater than the realms of the anointing when you touch those realms you will not look for the anointing again it will become the natural overflow of that experience hallelujah and so the Lord is bringing us to realms of intimacy great men are product of incredible encounters spiritual encounters that can set them on fire encounters that can bring them to points of intimacy and that's what the Holy Ghost wants to give us quickly I want to tell you the things that we are going to be doing in Koinonia number one Koinonia is an experience of intimacy with the Holy Ghost One of the things that the Lord is going to be doing through this meeting is to bring everyone individually and corporately into a point where you 
can say i know the holy spirit i know him he's my friend where the realities of the spirit that every time you carry the bible to read it it will become your experience not just something about some people that you read but it will be a living experience that's what god wants to bring into our lives so koinonia is a place of experience there are three things that will happen to you the first thing is you will be with him koinonia sets the platform for intimacy even in worship as we open up ourselves in worship and open up ourselves to the atmosphere of heaven there is an intercourse there is a oneness there is a participation that the holy ghost brings into our lives the second thing that god is going to be doing in our lives is the revelation of his word the revelation of his principles hear me friends jesus said thy kingdom come matthew chapter 6 he says thy will be done that means when we understand his will and his principles then his kingdom can come hallelujah and so god is going to be teaching us the principles the principles of the spirit hear me we are all products listen please we are all products of our environments our mindset is the sum total of all the orientation we've had from our experiences and from our environments and our mindset is so important and so there is an alignment that the holy ghost is going to be bringing even through koinonia bringing us to a point of kingdom alignment a man of god calls it a recalibration our minds will be tilted so that we begin to perceive realities from God's standpoint. It's called the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 5, chapter 2 from verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, permit this mind to be manifest in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There is a standpoint that we must see reality the world has taught believers to respond to things and when we come into koinonia the place of intimacy one of the things that the lord does is to reorient us and give us the mindset of kingdom citizens the bible says you will not call conspiracy what they call conspiracy it says when men say there is a casting down you will say there is a lifting up hallelujah a redefinition of situations and circumstances when men are swallowed up by certain things like job you will say though he slay me yet will i praise him he said i know that my redeemer liveth. there is a mindset that is given to you the mindset of a citizen that is of the kingdom and so you don't just praise and worship him because of results or car or money or all of these things you come to a point where you praise him truly and you worship him for who he is it's the mindset of the kingdom you come to a point where you are trained to see the unseen the bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal god brings our eyes into an alignment such that we begin to perceive realities from the standpoint of heaven and when you go home and they say things are not working you don't join the world as though you do not have a solution you come as moses who came out from the presence of god and you say i am an ambassador i represent a government by myself i can do nothing but i belong to a government that is competent and able and i've been vested with the ability to represent that government there is a mindset this is one of the greatest miracles that the lord is going to be giving us it's amazing how our mindsets can make or break us when we have wrong mindsets we interpret things from the wrong perspective but the Lord through koinonia will be bringing us to that point where we have the mind of Christ say after me the mind of Christ the thinking pattern of the kingdom God will be helping us to learn to look up to him alone 
the bible says i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help many of us have been trained to run after men and so our the series of disappointments we have in our lives are endless but the bible says woe unto him who puts his strength in a man the lord brings you to a point where you lift up your eyes and say lord unto thee i lift up my soul a point where he becomes alpha omega in your life hallelujah the third thing that the lord is going to be doing is to be exposing us to the ministry of the holy spirit many of us have not had the opportunity to experience the fullness of the ministry of the holy spirit at best all we have seen is just people falling on the ground but there is more there is so much more to the ministry of the holy spirit the teaching ministry of the holy spirit the counseling ministry of the holy spirit the lord is going to be opening us to the revelations of signs and wonders miracles transformations by the power of the spirit where men will come and receive a real transformation where sick people will come and receive real healings and deliverances Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he said and he went about doing good and healing all not some they that were oppressed why for God was with him that's the secret the mystery of his divine presence cheaply bringing the miraculous to his people and the Lord is going to be exposing through koinonia the love of the spirit the Bible says there abided these three faith hope and love but the greatest of all is love the greatest motivation the human spirit needs is love many of us have come from terrible environments when nobody believes in you many of us have lived in all kinds of complex but I welcome you to a place where God loves you the way you are I welcome you to a place where God does not say change and come he says come as you are and I will make you religion can say may make yourself and come but God says I accept you it doesn't matter what you have done men may look down at you but I know that a great one can arise from you who would have known that a little fisherman will become an apostle who would have known that a doubting Thomas will make up the 12 that will shake the world koinonia the experience of participation in the spirit and when God brings us through this school then he equips us to represent his government the end of all of these things is that we are with him so much that we become like him and then we can represent him your life is supposed to be a reflection of the kingdom you represent there are many believers that the only way you know they are believers is when they start praying in tongues or laying hands if you must lay hands on somebody for the world around you to know you are a christian then you are not an effective christian the bible says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples when you have love one for another there is the character hear me friends your character must outweigh your anointing if you want to truly reflect the life of the kingdom that when men look at you there is the carriage of the presence of the spirit that's the first thing that attracts them to you not just your message not just your power not just your anointing not just your prosperity but the presence of god how many of you have been around people and when you just come out maybe from prayer or worship you just sit close to them and you find out that they begin to tell you about their life you didn't ask them any question they begin to tell you you know things are not working you know why they are responding to an atmosphere that you have created it's like a magnetic field they just come and sit around you and begin to talk and say look i have not shared this with anybody even my mother but i don't know why i don't know why now you know why koinonia it's a product of intimacy when you spend time with the spirit you don't need to spend time before the world there is an atmosphere that you carry and i trust that the lord will be bringing us to that point hear me friends prosperity favor miracles all of those things are not the focus the presence of god is as you seek him you will suddenly turn back and see that all of these things are seeking you the presence of god that's the secret that's the good old secret friends it's been the good old secret 
and Solomon said he will not collect the field free of charge and the Bible says he offered a thousand bond offerings and it arose as a sweet smelling sevil and that night the Lord came and said Solomon you have touched me there is something about your worship you have done something to me he didn't send an angel he came and he said Solomon what would you have me do and then he touched his heart again he didn't ask for prosperity and power he touched something in Solomon and he gave him riches honor fame blessings hear me friends as we stay in the presence of God to say Lord I want to be prepared so that I can be used by you there is nothing the Lord will not give you the Lord told me something I shared it when we we're having our retreat the Lord told me something he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you if you will let men see me we are coming to a point where all of our idols and the arrogance that ministry and all of these things are built will crumble friends I cannot tell you how the senior pastor of this assembly has become such an icon of humility when people look at me and say you are humble I feel they are mocking me because when you see this servant of God the humility in his life is unbelievable and that's how you know a man who has stayed in the presence humility is a product of koinonia because when you see certain dimensions of him and see how unworthy you are in yourself saved by the finished work of christ nobody will motivate you into pride it doesn't matter what they put on the posters and so god is bringing us to that point of intimacy god is bringing us to that point of knowledge friends that you found yourself here tonight means you're a participant of the revival that the lord is bringing upon the earth and you must open up your heart and say lord i believe i believe i believe he told jeremiah from when you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet hallelujah so I welcome you to Koinonia, the place of intimacy, the place of participation, the place of partnership, where the Lord will be opening new realms and dimensions of His Spirit to us. He'll be bringing us to that point where we'll be trusted. See, the anointing you have been looking for, you will get it at a platter of gold. The presence of God and the intimacy of the Spirit will bring it for you. There are realms of power and grace and glory that many of us will step into that if you were ever told you will step into it you will not believe it but god will bring it as a byproduct of koinonia rise up on your feet
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.